Bilgehan Öztürk, who is a researcher over at the SETA Foundation, which is a uh, Turkish think tank. Uh, Bilgehan, good to have you here on the news hour. Um, uh, quite a comprehensive operation. In fact, uh, one of the largest of its kind in, in, in recent memory. When I look at sort of the, uh, the 80 Samad targets, um, I want to sort of bring in my sort of uh, very amateur analysis of this, and that is I can classify it into two categories. One, uh, what that are the targets that are near the, the Turkish border. We're talking about targets like Zap, Avashin, and Hakuk. I'm thinking the reasoning behind that is uh, in ensuring Turkey's uh, border security. But then you also saw Turkish uh, warplanes target places like Kandil and, and Sinjar, which are much further inland and possibly even more important for the terrorist organization. Um, I, I'm wondering how you classify this operation. Well, it wasn't amateur at all. Uh, so the, one of the most distinctive uh, thing about the latest operation is uh, what you what you already already put it. Um, the first the first part of it, the adjacent territories to Turkish borders uh, have been have been pounded. But at the same time, uh, deep areas such as such as Kandil, such as Sinjar, uh, what what is what is called deep uh, deep areas or deep operations. Uh, thanks to the thanks to the um, sophisticated uh, capability of Turkish armed forces, uh, the air strikes towards these regions are not a new thing, um, because of the because of the presence of uh, many shelters and mobilization of militants. Time to time, Turkish jets are hitting these uh, targets, but this time uh, the scale uh, and the and the number of air assets. As you, as you put it, 20, more than 25 uh, air assets um, engaging, engaging in the same operation, but at the same time, more than 81 uh, targets have been annihilated. So militarily speaking, uh, this is very, it is very significant because uh, in the air operation, uh, fighter jets and um, armed and unarmed UAVs have been conducted. This requires a very high level of, um, let's say, uh, data transfer between between these elements, and it is a very sophisticated um, capability for an army. So it is it is uh, it is assumed to be the uh, future of the warfare, which is called network based warfare. So uh, I think uh, we have seen or witnessed a very um, say early um, indication or an example of network network based uh, operation in this okay. operation. But Bilgan, I, I want to ask you. So basically, Turkey is showing off its its uh, its military sophistication. But the PKK problem uh, for Turkey has been going on for the better part of, of, of 40 years. Uh, there have been lulls and, and periods of increased activity. Um, but is Turkey closer to solving this problem? As we witnessed, um, I think many viewers would remember the negotiation process or the reconciliation process a couple of years ago. Um, Turkey tried a different path uh, for solving this uh, solving this problem, um, basically basically not engaging in military uh, military and means. But it, it didn't work out uh, because of the because of the gains strategic gains of PYD YPG in northern Syria. This process did not yield uh, tangible results. So uh, the military means to. Um, to solve the problem seems to be the best uh, among the among the, you know let's say um, tried uh, options. Okay. So uh, in terms of in terms of the number of militants and other leaders leadership cadres that have been neutralized uh, recently, I would say uh, Turkey in its base uh, one of the base phases in its fight okay. against PKK. It, it's the closest at this point to the solution yeah, of the Bilgan, problem. I, I don't have a lot, a lot of time left with you, but I want to ask you briefly, uh, Hassan Abdullah, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to him, but he basically talked about uh, the regional dynamics and possibly uh, the repercussions. Um, how does Turkey's latest operation in northern Iraq affect the situation across the border in Syria with the YPG? I believe this show of force um, has would have ramifications not only not only for Syria but also even further to Libya. It is I know it is quite speculative, 
but if you if you put it uh, in the same basket like the the latest um, let's say metro drill over there and also the latest uh, this operation in northern Iraq, it's basic basically yes uh, neutralizing the enemy target, but at the same time showing the force to um, other other regional rivals. So uh, it would send some messages uh, the, to the to the actors in northern Syria, and not only YPG, but the, also the benefactors of YPG uh, about the Turkey's capabilities and its political and strategic ramifications too. Center Foundations, Bilgan Öztürk, thank you very much for joining us here on the news hour. I do appreciate your analysis and putting all this into perspective.